On this episode of Pedalbox, we add another piece of bodywork to the car and we shave a particularly hairy yak in doing a lot more of our wiring work. We're picking up where we left off in the end of the last episode, building more of our radiator cooling duct here. We're going to keep on building from the bottom of the rad and build the sort of lower half of the back half of the air duct where it's going to come up and meet the funnel that we're putting on the bottom of the bonnet. So we're going to make a nice plane somewhere around here that this is all going to duct out through. Now this is obviously a great idea because today it's almost too hot to think and this is going to be one of the more complex pieces of sheet metal that we've done so far. Not the most complex but it's, it's pretty well up there. It's going to be one piece bent all the way down from the side across all the way across the car and back up the other side and hopefully we're going to wind up with something that's the right sort of shape that we can blend the bonnet back down onto it once we're done. It's been a bit like Groundhog Day here the last few hours. has been sort of bend a little, cut a little, shape a little, test fit a little, wash, rinse, repeat. But we have finally got the back half of the lower half of our radiator duct. So this lip here goes just underneath the bottom of the radiator down at the front of the car. These lips at the side are where we're going to attach a couple of little cover plates just to blank off over here, one of which we're going to send our hose through. And hopefully it just drops in No, it doesn't. Um, I'll get back to that. Uh, but yeah, it fits in vaguely somewhere like that. Then we punch our hose through the little panel that we're going to weld on there. And this sits over the anti-roll bar, over the power steering rack and everything, and gives us a nice clean airway for all of our cooling air to come straight back out the bonnet. Now it might be a little bit tricky to see here in the void with all this black paint that we've got around everywhere now, but the anti-roll bar has actually had to be relocated to make room for the scoop because it comes back just a little bit too far and the anti-roll bar probably wants to run pretty much through here on it, which is obviously not really doable. So we've made a couple of little brackets to relocate the arb backward. These two bol uh, bolt holes on the front fit into our existing mount and the anti-roll bar fits into the rear too. So we've just shifted it back a few inches to make a bit of space. We've now got an interesting new problem because our coolant lines are a little bit constrained and we probably can't remove the fuel tank anymore. Um, but hopefully we'll just sort of figure out a solution for those later. But Chris, I hear you ask because you're a clever bunch, how are your drop links going to work if you've moved your anti-roll bar back so far? Surely the angles aren't going to line up. Well, it's a happy coincidence, actually. It turns out they were horribly misaligned earlier, and we were looking at having to make, like, uh, hind-jointed ones or something. But now that we've moved it back, the drop links just fit in like that. It's almost as if we planned it. Which we didn't. But it's almost as if we did. There you go. That easy. Well, with the rain coming in now, we've got one last thing that we're going to try and do today before the weather gets too bad to do anything in, and that is put on our rear hitches. Now, we were originally going to use the towing eye receiver that came off of the front of the TT, weld it up underneath one of these chassis legs and use that. But we decided in the end, since we're going to be taking this to tracks, so we're probably going to want to bring some parts and tools and everything with us, and obviously it's not exactly big on storage, we thought we'd put some big box hitch receivers on so that we could hang like a big parts box or whatever else off the back of this. So we're going to change to a couple of couple inch wide metal boxes, weld these on underneath, one under each chassis leg, and that should give us tons and tons of strength so that we can hang anything we want off the back of this. Yesterday I managed to get another panel onto the car. I've got this forward section of the front arch in and it's looking really, really good. I spent quite a long time yesterday trying to position this in exactly the right spot so I could use as few tacks as possible to then do this seam first, just in case this went horribly wrong and I'd have to redo this entire section and cut this panel back as well. So I'm really thrilled with how well this one came out.
they both look fantastic and the join is is actually better on the other side i did this one first and the second one turned out even better than this one did we haven't done the tops yet though because we're not sure how that's going to roll over and how we're going to make that work so it's not welded along the top yet it's just up to the, the the body line that it needs to get to but i'm still really really pleased with how this is looking i'm going to try and add one piece or one matching piece at each side every episode we do on this and actually get the bodywork in because if nothing else that's going to force me to get things finished <laughs> As you've seen, we've got the engine back in the car now, which is useful for a number of reasons. We've still got a bunch of wiring to do before we're confident that we can make this thing fire, and we still need to rebuild our new boost system with the new intercooler in there. So we've removed our turbo outlet line, which comes off the top of the turbo here and normally goes straight off to our first turbo, to our first intercooler even. And we've um, been working on a couple of little bits and pieces of bracketry to support our MAF and the water reservoir expansion tank fill port dealie. Now we'd already mounted this to the body in the past, the problem is that the bracket that we made up for it was welded on and it kind of got in the way when we were taking the engine in and out because we're using really all of the room that's available in this opening to yank and replace the engine. So we've had to remove the mount and we've modified the bracket some and we're going to mount it a little bit differently now. So we've got the modified mount, we're going to put that onto a run of box section which is going to bolt onto the body and the engine bracket at the front here. And the same bracket is going to support a plate that we're putting in to hold our MAF in place. So we've just got done making up the two halves of the first part of our bracket here. We've got this is going to run forward from a couple of nuts that we've got on the body there. And here is a little upright that fits onto our engine mount. So I'm just going to bolt this in real quick now. It's not too tricky. It'll be a lot harder when we've got the clamshell on the back of the car, but that's a problem for future us. Well, I guess today we've shaved a particularly hairy yak because we came out here with the intent of doing some wiring now that we had the engine in. And that meant that we had to work out where a bunch of wires went, specifically our expansion tank. And that meant we had to make a bracket for it. And making the bracket for that has obviously extended into making one for the MAF. But it is now complete and we can bolt this back in, position those two tanks and start routing the wiring. And now that it's getting towards the end of the day and it'll probably be dark soon, we're probably going to end up having to do wiring tomorrow which is a great intention, but well, it might not happen. So now we're finally getting onto the wiring that we've been talking about doing the entire episode, which for the most part is just this piece of cable, but it is many, many strands. It's about two, two-ish dozen cables, which Chris has diligently soldered together and rejoined, so we now have this extension loom. Originally, this cable came all the way from the engine and went right the way to the front of the car, which is where it would normally go to, just next to the fuse box. Now, we wired that in, and then it was very carefully pointed out to us that if we need to remove the engine, this has to be unthreaded all the way along the car, which we didn't want. Normally, there's a very short tail, which is what we extended before, which would plug into the box just above the engine, into the fuse box as normal. So we've created this sort of extension loom that fits in the middle. Now we need something to hold this plastic bracket, much like we had at the front. So I've made up this little, I want to say box, but it's not really a box because it looks like just a bunch of bits of, of sheet kind of thrown together. But this fits just on the wing down here like that. And once this is actually plumbed in all the way through, there's a little pin that I've added on the inside and a cutout I've made in there. And this just drops in like a cassette into this little housing that we're going to weld onto the wing. And then the rest of the cables will come through from the engine bay, plug into there. And now we have a much easier, simpler way to disconnect the engine from the rest of the car without having to fight the cables in and out every time we have to do it. Well, again, it's been a little bit of a grand tour of the car this episode. We've been sort of all over the place doing loads and loads of little bits and pieces. But overall, it's a lot happier place now. Yeah, we managed to get the scoop in and we've also solved our drop links by virtue of that moving the uh, anti-roll bar back. And we've also managed to make a start on finishing the wiring loom, which it always feels like we're trying to finish it and it, it's never going to be done. Yeah, I feel like the wiring loom is one of those fun jobs that's just going to sort of keep going and going and bugging us from time to time. Yeah. But there's we'll chip away at it. There's so many little bits that we need to add in. There's this whole bunch at the front that we need to properly connect up. Uh, we've run things to length and we've put the connectors on for the headlights, but there is a load more that we need to do because we really want to get rid of the little fan control box that sits on the front because they are apparently 
quite prone to failure, so we need to bypass that and put a slightly different wiring system in. But at least we've got that done, and we've also managed to sort our water bottle eventually and the MAF at the same time. So yeah, it's been, been pretty productive. I do love how fixing the water bottle was done by us wanting to do wiring. It's just yeah. ridiculous. It's, it's a very backwards way to, uh, to go about doing that. But that's but this project in a nutshell, yes, really. Yeah, absolutely. It is, to say it's organic is uh, probably a bit of an understatement, really. And if you'd like to support this project or the Thunderbird or any of the other ones that we have, you can do by buying a t-shirt or a cap, which I probably need right now, or long sleeve t-shirts, hoodies, any of those things at shop.pedalbox.show. Or you can also jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show and support us there for as little as a dollar a month. The $5 and $10 tiers get access to our Discord server, where recently we've been posting a fair bit of behind the scenes sneak peeks of this. Yeah, little mistakes that we've made and uh, problems we've encountered along the way. We normally try and drop them in. Uh, a lot of it recently has been wiring, I must admit, which is not the most fun thing to, to watch, but it's not the most fun thing to do either. So you can join us on that journey. If you want to. If you want to. Thanks to all of our patrons uh, who've been with us either one month or I think 18 months is the longest one at the moment. So thanks very much for your support throughout and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,